Okay. Um, all right. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're located right now. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar about what's next for dot triple X Sunrise B and Adult Block. My name is Karthik Balachander, and I'm a marketing manager at webnames.ca. I will be hosting today's webinar, and we've structured this as an interactive panel with plenty of room for questions. Today, we have with us the one and only uh, Garrett Sondry, product and operations manager for webnames. Garrett is a walking, talking encyclopedia of everything to do with domain names, hosting, and the web names platform. He has great experience in helping customers unlock value from their use of products. The second member of our panel, and no less, is Nick Garistinos, who many of you may already know as your first port of call for anything to do with web names. Nick is our corporate account manager and boasts over a decade of experience in helping register, acquire, manage, protect, transfer, and simply anything to do with domain names. Before we get started, this is a heads up that this event is being recorded and will be shared online after the event. If you have any questions at any point in time, please use the raise hands function or type your question into the chat window and I will post them to our panel. If you have a question that is specific to your company and may include sensitive information, and if you need advice from one of us, we can connect at the end of this webinar after I've paused this recording or you can email us at corporate at webnames.ca. Now let's get right into it. So to start off, um, why don't we get a bit of uh, context, Nick? Can you tell us what's happening and why the 1st of December is a key date? And in other words, why is now the time to act with regard to adult block and uh, sunrise b absolutely uh taking a step back uh in 2011 um the dot triple x launch um at that time the domain registration landscape uh, was thinner in terms of generic uh, top level uh domain extension uh there were about 20 uh generic top level domain extensions uh when so when triple x came in it was meant to be a um section of the internet uh, dedicated to the adult entertainment industry uh, and uh, obviously the this brought some concern especially across brand owner where um, they wouldn't want their brand associated with uh, adult entertainment industry uh, content uh, as a result the registry uh, called icm uh, enabled the process called uh, sunrise b and the sunrise b process allowed trademark owners with registered trademark to uh submit a block registration or a negative registration where rather than registering the domain name it would actually be block um, for a period of time uh, preventing any usage and any other party from from registering them uh, the duration of these block were uh, lined up with the agreement that icm had with ICANN, uh, and those agreement last for 10 years so uh here we are in 2021 10 years later uh and changes have been made to their agreement, and uh, there have also been some some other change that happened uh, leading up to this, as the registry became accredited for uh, three other adult entertainment uh, related domain extension dot adult dot porn and dot uh, sex. Uh, so December of 2011 was when all the submissions for Sunrise B were made. So December 1st of 2021 is the day those are going away and being replaced with uh, new options. Uh, these options are called Adult Block and Adult Block Plus, and uh, it's a replacement of the Sunrise B block, and it's meant to block not just tri dot triple X, but all the uh, four domain extension again, which are triple X, Adult, Porn, and Sex. Fantastic, thank you. So um, if if we now switch tracks a little and go into what makes a brand or a mark qualify for adult block could you elaborate a bit on that front i sure can so uh there's always the straightforward registered trademark uh trademark registered in any jurisdiction of, of the planet uh the trademark uh, can be submitted to the trademark clearing house or not in this particular case uh if it is submitted in the trademark clearing house an smd file is provided 
uh, by the trademark clearinghouse, which can be in turn provided to us for us to submit your registration. If not, uh, registration number and information is, is all that is needed to complete the registration of the adult block uh, based on the trademark. Uh, unregistered trademark also qualify. Those uh, must be applied for, uh, and, and in this case, the application number uh, would, would then be required uh, along with, uh, you know, some some usage and proof of usage, typically, uh, you know, it being referred on a website or a pamphlet or anything of that nature would work. Uh, large organizations, company name also uh, are allowed for uh, submission uh, for the adult blocks. Uh, those are the big brands uh, that can easily be, you know, uh, verified uh you know the, the, the bigger bands of, of the world can definitely go uh, and do so like nike or, or reebok or pepsi uh and then finally uh celebrity names um so uh, public figures of celebrity uh, uh have the ability to, to um, submit their their domain register their equivalent domains as adult block uh and adult block plus uh and all they really need to do is prove uh, that they are who they are fantastic thank you Let's bring in uh, Garrett now. So Garrett, if you can help us understand what the risks are to a brand if they choose to allow their Sunrise Beat expire without switching to adult block. I know that it's probably not a very inexpensive proposition, but what are the risk factors that they need to weigh and balance while making this decision? Sure, thanks Karthik. Um, actually, before we talk about that, I wanted to go back and I, was, I wanted to put my hand. Uh, question for Nick then about the elig eligibility of adult block is the eligibility requirements then less than the same as or more than uh, Sunrise B it seems like the list is bigger now so the, the the ease of access to this product is easier now than was for Sunrise B is that right it is correct. It is easier. It's open to more groups. Uh, Sunrise B was typically uh, was only for uh, registered trademark, um, and so they only could uh, only only registered trademark can ap apply for here. They've opened the the floor the the the, the gates to um, unregistered trademark, as mentioned, uh, company names and celebrity names, which was which were not options back with Sunrise B uh, initially launched. Right. Okay. So for folks representing their clients and whatnot, the what can be protected via this product is perhaps bigger than it was more voluminous than it was in sunrise b if they've got common names or brands that they have not marked yet but are are associated with the brand um okay so your question karthik sorry about uh risk if you uh choose not to engage with this product right now so I guess the question as it is, is if you've got a Sunrise B and you choose not to get into this product right away, what are the risks? Well, knowing that if if you've already had a Sunrise B, you've already realized the benefits of having a Sunrise B for the last 10 years, uh, the, the protection it's afforded for a decade, um, it was set and forget, right? Did not have to worry about this particular issue in terms of the scope of that product. Uh, Fortunately, as we'll see here, the scope of this product product is a little bit bigger in a good way. It covers more. So the risk is that, uh, you know, for the next X amount of years, um, this will be something that needs ongoing monitoring uh, at a cost um, to somebody, your clients. Um, there are outfits out there that do provide monitoring, but uh, once you uh, these are all reactive uh, services, right? They'll discover infringement after it's happened or as it's happening, and then you have to go through mitigation efforts, which again is another cost on top of it. So um, the the risks are, are, are time, money, brand, inf uh, like damage to your brand, um, brand uh, reputational loss, loss of business, uh, all of those things but again this is the only proactive uh sort of uh product that, that is out there everything else that the industry can speak to is all reactive so yeah. aside from costs and time which that yes this product costs a little bit of money um so does being reactive costs a little bit money but in that delta is the unknown of uh you know damage to a brand things that you can't quite put a put a uh 
cost on ahead of time, um, depending on the type of infringement. So that's risk. That's the real answer, I think, there is what is, <laughs> you ask, what is the risk of, of not getting this? Well, it is risk. Um, you're taking a, a, a risk by uh, taking a reactive approach as opposed to a proactive approach. So um, cost-wise, we'll look at costs in, in a little bit. Um, the 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 costs in the here and now are X and Y, but the cost over the span of time um, and much like insurance, uh, yeah, insurance costs money, but uh, what it protects is perhaps even more valuable. Absolutely. And it's it's also, I guess, the peace of mind that comes from it having a set and forget kind of a methodology instead of having to uh, constantly, as you said, monitor and maybe uh, deal with repercussions in case something should happen in the future. And, and it's not just if it happens in the future, like a singular time, it can just keep, it'll keep happening. Um, yep. Because of all the variations of, of what's covered here, those are all potential exploits. So yep. if, if you're trying to envision like what is the likelihood of X happening, it's not like it would just happen potentially once. Yeah. Like your house can burn down multiple times over the span. Of, I mean, it sounds, that's a little flippant in that context, but uh, the risk is ongoing. Um, so, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So um, one of the comparisons that you alluded to was uh, maybe using defensive registrations as an alternative. And uh, you did mention we can look at the price and uh, try to evaluate that. So let's go over to that before we come back to maybe the differences between Adult Block and uh, Sunrise B. So with regard to the pricing, um, this is how it shakes out with uh, web names pricing for these four TLDs that are covered under adult block. Uh, Nick, is there something you'd like to speak to this based on your conversations with clients and also um, just just the comparative savings that they might have? Well, uh, so definitely uh, worth doing the block versus doing every single one of these registration individually. It's uh, easier to manage. Of course, you don't have to worry about four uh, domains. You, you just have one. It's blocked. Uh, you don't have to worry about updating it, uh, updating stuff four times. Uh, I would also add that the Adult Block Plus uh, program is is quite uh, quite good. It, it covers so many variations of, of your trademarks. Uh, homonyms and in today's world just going back to, to what Garrett was saying uh, not only is is the chance of, of you know infringement situation happen more than once but uh, bad actors are just getting craftier uh, so so having protection across as many brands and variations of your brands uh, is is you know it's very key so the adult block uh, at the cost for what it gives you uh, really is a great option um, because it just covers so many things. Uh, and, and again, the price um, is structured in a way where you can save some money versus having to buy all four uh, domain individually. So if your intention is to really to make sure these are blocked and, and uh, you know, in a safe place, uh, using one of the two options is great. But again, the plus one in today's world probably gives you a bit more uh, bang for your bucks. Fantastic. So going back to maybe the differences between Adult Block and Sunrise B, uh, I think both of you made points about the flexibility and uh, the coverage itself because Sunrise B was largely restricted to dot triple X. But uh, if there's more that you would want to weigh in first, uh, Garrett, and then maybe Nick. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading what you got in the slides here. The I think the number one, and maybe you've got it on the next slide. Uh, it's a, to just talk about the adult block plus and what that is. Um, in, in from my perspective, that product, uh, it, it, we're going to talk about what it covers, but uh, that's really where the value of this entire program is. Um, so adult block regular um, blocks um, everything in your SMD file if you've got a trademark. Um, exact match um, and contains. You can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, Nick. Just exact match. Uh, just in this exact case. match. Yes, so that's right. Just exact, exact match. Money. So um, yeah. for we saw in the what's in the eligibility thing, there's like four different types of things: marks, unregistered right. marks, yeah, yeah. The 
the marks that go through the um, trademark clearinghouse, you'll get an SMD file, and that file often covers the variations in and of itself. So adult block will cover the exact match of those variations. Right. You don't have trademark clearinghouse, and you just got a unregistered mark or a celebrity name or whatever. We're just talking about exact match of that one string. If you want to if you want to protect another string, you have to buy another adult block. Correct. Right. So. You, you can buy many, and if that makes sense to, to somebody, they can do, go that route. To uh, foresee that being a, a need, that is where Adult Block Plus comes in. Um, so this, uh, this product automatically does variations, and the variations are numerous and voluminous. <laughs> um, yeah. So they use, I, got, I had to look this up, what it uses. It's, it's the Unicode Consortium Typographical Library mm -hmm. Variations. So, uh, Karthik, I know on a slide you've got a link to the tool that will allow uh, interested parties to see yeah. the variations that would automatically be blocked. It yeah. is not overly prescriptive. Um, we th we threw in some names there, and we were getting back more than a hundred variations yeah. per. So the value of adult block blocking one exact match and uh, adult block plus blocking hundreds, I'll say. Yep. Um, th there's the value and there's the difference. So um, the typographical matches or, or mismatches um, involve, you know, putting dashes between words, uh, pluralizing things and replacing letters with other like letters, spelling variations, numbers. We've all seen those kind of sneaky variations. They yeah. also cover um, other uh, IDN uh, language variations that look very similar, similar. So, like a Cyrillic version of uh, an ASCII string character. Mm -hmm. Character. Thank you. So that's where like the hundred ver uh, variations come from. Um, so those would all be covered. Uh, where the benefits compound is if you are enrolled in the trademark clearinghouse and you have an SMD with a few variations, let's say five, uh, and you get the Adult Block Plus product, you get. Uh, the hundred variations on all five. So now you're talking 500 uh, strings being covered in one product. You don't even have to think about what the variations are. They're all done for you. Again, we've got a tool to allow people to see what those are specifically if they want to see exactly what they would be ahead of time. Um, but again, these lists are massive um, and I don't think anyone's going to read every single one, but they do get a sense of the difference between the two. So the cost difference between them, we had them on the other slide. Uh, I think it's just over double, but when yep. you are looking at, you know, a hundredfold uh, times coverage, uh, the value, that's where the value is right there in that one product. Yep, no kidding. And uh, like these were slides that we do have where we comparing adult block and adult block mm -hmm. plus and also the tool that uh, Garrett referenced. But I'll let, let Nick uh, weigh in on that differences uh, between Sunrise B protections and adult block if there was more to add. Um, I mean, Sunrise B, as we talked before, was strictly for triple X. Um, there was only, you know, the one avenue uh, to do this block and that ended December 1st of 2011. Uh, nowadays, the doll block is, is we're talking about it because Sunrise Bs are going away and they are, uh, you know, there's an option now to, to turn your Sunrise B into an adult block version. Uh, but it's ongoing after this. People can come uh, with new trademarks or, or existing mm -hmm. trademarks after the fact and make sure they uh, take advantage of this protection going forward. Uh, and, and so that's a big difference in my mind. It, it, it's, it's an ongoing coverage versus a one-time thing. And uh, then it's up to the brand owner to determine how long they want to keep this for and then just renew uh, for periods of time that, uh, you know, much like insurance, once you set it you have it there it's protecting you uh mm -hmm. get all the benefits that way so that would be for me the the, the biggest the biggest perk of the adult block product uh, product this is the ongoing aspect of it right great can i ask a question to nick just for clarification of course Looks like we're paused here. Um, Maybe some technical difficulties with Garrett. If you can hear us, Garrett. 
Yeah, I was able to hear Juliana, but not the other. I'm able to hear uh, Karthik and Julie, uh, but Garrett, this is frozen on my screen. Oh, OK. Sorry, Nick, where did you leave off? I can anticipate maybe what Garrett was going to ask you. Uh, we were just uh, talking about the uh, sunrise B difference uh, or sorry, the adult block difference. And, and my point was the uh, ongoing capability uh, of it where brand owner can come uh, even after December 1st and submit their right. um, brands through adult block and block them. So that's essentially where things were left. Exactly. So it's not limited. You don't have to get everything sorted and in by this December 1st deadline. You can continue on after that and continually enroll your brands as you make sort of decisions about what you need to get protected or not. And especially those new ones that you're talking about because Sunrise B was over a decade ago. So most companies by now will have additional brands that they might want to enroll and that can take a little bit more just sort of maybe decision making time on their end. Yep, yep, and the the ease of the process as well makes it quite easy for brand owner to to make the determination and and uh, let us do the submissions on their behalf. Yep. Okay. Um, Garrett will be joining us shortly, but in the meantime, we can continue going into the differences between Adel Block and Adel Block Plus, uh, and also the tool that um, we ran a test off too, like the screenshot on this particular slide shows you the variants that are available for web names, uh, including all the variations that uh, Garrett listed out about non ASCII characters and so on. So in, in your experience, Nick, is uh, this something brands are uh, aware of and how would you recommend they use them? Well, uh, definitely, uh, you know, if it's not something they're aware of, uh, you know, it, it's it's worth noting at this moment. We see lots of uh, uh, of domain being registered with a special character to to sort of make them look like they're um, legitimate uh, domains. Uh, to you know, if you scan them quickly uh, without paying attention to too much to to the actual character set, there's a number of different. Uh, Characters and other alphabets that uh, could sort of could be combined together to make it make them look uh, like you know uh, you know your, your standard Latin alphabet. So uh, so the variation uh, option here uh, sort of thinks about all these these uh, these these variations for you uh, without having to uh, to put too too much thoughts into it. I've gone through some exercise with some clients where we've been looking at uh, variations of the letter O or Y or any other thing in other alphabet and it's uh, it's a lot of work to do uh, and and you know you never know if you're 100% uh, sure on all the the variations that you identify with this it, it, it does all the thinking for you so um, truly a powerful tool I, I I think if if anybody contemplates in getting an adult block the adult block plus uh, just because the magnitude of options you get out of it and and again what I was mentioning before about bad actors being craftier uh, with their domains uh, really gives you that 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 great coverage there that that, that you need uh, and and that uh, give you that peace of mind in the process. Absolutely, and it's important to point out that this tool does not require you to be signed up or pay. It's it's free to use and it's publicly available. The link to that is on this slide over here, and if you need help using it, you can get in touch with one of us uh, by emailing or contacting our support. Um, let Oh yeah, go on, Nick. No, I was going to say, you know, people will be surprised to see how many variations there is. Uh, as, as Garrett was mentioning earlier, we, we've done a few a few labels in there and, uh, you know, you get hundreds of results. So uh, it, it's quite impressive. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so what does a brand need if they are registering for an adult block? Well, if they have a Sunrise B in the system already, uh, the Sunrise B detail uh, that were provided uh, in 2011 are, are still uh, valid information to use to convert uh, a Sunrise B into an adult block. Plus, uh, if um, and, and for both cases, whether or not you have a Sunrise B or you're just a new brand owner trying to submit your uh, trademark as adult blocks, you can uh, go the trademark clearinghouse way, uh, where uh, an SMD file gets provided by the Trademark Clearinghouse, which is uh, sort of a central database of trademark verification. Uh, that SMD file gives you uh, all the labels and uh, that your mark, uh, that the, the, the mark has as variations, and you can use the SMD file to submit your adult blocks. Uh, 
you don't need to be registered with the trademark clearing house uh the uh registry of the uh, the icm registry uh behind all this have made it uh, easier uh where uh, only having a registered trademark qualifies for um submitting an adult block request uh, typically all that's needed is the trademark registration number and the owner uh there's a verification process that happens after the fact if there's anything that uh, they deem as necessary information to ask for, they will uh, reach out to us, the registrar, and we'll, we'll contact our clients to let them know and uh, organize any paperwork that might be needed. Uh, and then uh, trademarks that are in the unregistered state, uh, but applied for uh, do qualify. Um, there's a proof of usage that is uh, requested at that point where um, you just need to, to show that, that you know, even though you've applied for it, it's not yet, uh, the application process is not yet completed, you're using it already, you have it on your website or uh, any other type of usage would, would suffice. Uh, screenshots of this. Uh, and for celebrity name, it's it's a bit of the same. Uh, you have to establish that your celebrity, uh, your agency uh, might have documentation that uh, they can provide to the registry to uh, uh, prove who you are versus having to provide IDs and, and things like that. Uh, usage as well. Uh, uh, proof of usage as well may be needed where, you know, the celebrity would have to demonstrate that they're using it for a website already as a .com variation or whatnot. So, uh, but the registry's made this as easy as possible for people to take advantage of. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's meant to be uh, for brand owner and for for people that are actually going to, to, to you know, block their trademarks and, and or their names. So, uh, you know, they, they just want to make this easy. And if there's any... Uh, any red flags, then they'll be sure to uh, contact us as the registrar and we'll uh, be sure to work with our clients to get necessary documentation where and when needed. Fantastic. And I see that Garrett is now able to join the call again. Um, I'm back. Sorry about that, everybody. Fantastic. Uh, did you do you want to finish up that question that you were yeah, about to pose? I bet you talked about it while it was out, but I'll, I'll just pose it again. Um, just the, the idea of adult block, um, from a temporal perspective, uh, so there's no deadline for purchase, the purchasing of that adult block. That's what I wanted to just kind of clarify with Nick, right? It's an ongoing product. Um, unlike where Sunrise had a window of eligibility where you could purchase yep. the product. If, if anybody was around back in 10 years, 10 years ago, you remember the sort of the panic to like get it in before X date. So. Yep. Adult block is ongoing. Um, and the flip side of that, uh, adult block, how new is adult block? It's not brand spanking new, is it? It's been around for a little bit. Yeah, it's been around for three, three, four years at this point. Uh, right. Shortly after um, ICM registry uh, launched all their other extensions, so not just the triple X, but the dot adult dot Corn and dot sex, sex extension. Mm -hmm. uh, not shortly after that, the need came uh, for blocking these, uh, you know, all together. So that adult block product came, and it was built with the eventuality that Sunrise B would go uh, away at some point in the future. Uh, so it was essentially made as the plan, as a backup plan for for keeping a blocking mechanism across these domain extension and across the triple X uh, domain extension. One thing to add um, for those of, of you that are here, uh, specifically in regards to Sunrise B expiring December 1st, uh, if expiring Sunrise B will, Triple uh, X domain name will, will equal into the, the domain going back into uh, general availability if a block is not applied onto it. Uh, so if somebody wants to just keep the domain registered as a standard domain name, uh, they would have to wait until the Sunrise B is completed and released. And uh, there is no set date just yet. December 1st is the deadline to submit uh, the conversion to adult block, but the releasing of the triple X that are, have not been blocked uh, will happen uh, a few days later. Uh, as per the last touch base I had with the registry, which was last Friday, uh, that date has, yet, has not yet been determined. So uh, if you're concerned, uh, definitely you want to make sure that uh, we convert your Sunrise B into an adult block before December 1st. And how much time do you need to do that? typically? Uh, they're fairly easy to do for us uh, as a registrar on your behalf. Uh, you know, it, it, as long as you provide the instruction to us before November 30th, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, no problem. Uh, it takes a few minutes for us to get things organized and, and 
the building completed and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty straightforward process for us. Yeah, so do the clients need to provide any new information? If they already have the Sunrise B with us on file, do they need to do and provide anything else, like supporting documentation, anything? No, nope, not not off up front. Uh, you know, if, if anything uh, arise after, uh, yes, but uh, not up front. All they need to do is say yes and how long and uh, and off we go pretty much. So it's, uh, you know, it's really meant to make uh, everybody's life easy. OK, that's good. So so yeah, uh, adult block not being a brand spanking new product. It's been around for a while. Um, it is the eligibility for it is ongoing, provided uh, you, you meet the requirements that we've talked about. And yeah, the one thing that is temporal and is changing, of course, is the main theme of this is that the existing Sunrise Bs end in at the end of the month, ended uh, November, December 1st. Um, and that's the, if there's a deadline anywhere, is that um, for folks that already have one. Uh, if you if you fail to transition, then that mark that sorry, that string uh, goes back into the pool at a time that Nick has not been disclosed yet entirely, but it'll be fairly, fairly soon thereafter. Um, it'll become available for general registration by anyone. If if it is a registered mark and now you've got a uh, uh, trademark infringement going on, uh, you would need a mechanism to discover that uh, brand monitoring, whatnot, uh, and then you would undergo a uh, uh, arbitration or legal process to wrangle that back. All of that uh, is much less convenient than these types of products. So um, getting those in to Nick before November 30th, uh, all he needs is the word. That sounds like the easiest way to go for everybody, even if it's uh, um, just to buy you time, just to do a yeah. year or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and since uh, we're on the topic of uh, programs such as Adult Block, I just wanted to uh, float this up over here. Mm -hmm. As brand protection professionals, uh, what are some other programs that uh, companies and brands should consider similar to Adult Block? Right. Um, well, there they are on screen. Um, most registries already have a product similar to this to cover um, the extensions that they operate. Not everybody offers this, but the pre those that do not have stated that they will at some point in the future. So this concept, this DPML uh, concept, of, of which Adult Block is a flavor, um, it's become industry standard, and it will be expected that that these types of offerings are available everywhere in the near future but for the time being we've got a, a short list of the ones that are available across the industry the donuts one is the largest uh, they've got the largest portfolio of extensions that they operate and uh, their dpml covers all of them um, those following on the slides here can see the variations between like a regular product and a plus product or something that implies good and better uh, the better one, the plus ones, uh, do the variations. So like we have Adult Block and Adult Block Plus, same theme here. So if you want the, the variations, homonyms and whatnot, you're looking for at the plus variations of, of these. And you can kind of see that in the in the matrix there. So Donuts is the big one. Um, Uni Registry uh, has a few. What we're going to talk about sexy in a bit here. Um, there in that one, Uni Registry is recently been acquired by uh, GoDaddy, so that'll become a GoDaddy product. Um, T Rex is still in the mix. T Rex is a smaller independent, not independent, but uh, some operators, some registry operators only operate one uh, TLD, whereas you can see Donuts does 241. So these smaller operators offering a DPMML product for one extension just doesn't have that same economy of scale so they've come together uh, and formed a common product uh, called t-rex uh, currently covering 43. Um, dot club is doing their own thing right now so there's an example of somebody just doing one uh, extension um, they're, they're appropriately priced though uh, and then of course adult block at the bottom um, mm -hmm. but they're all variations on a theme um, blocking uh, future registrations of a mark or variations of a mark. Uh, most of these all have 
trademark clearinghouse requirements. At Oak Block is the exception, right? That's the first time I, th I believe that we've seen somebody That's correct. Product where you do not need to have uh, trademark clearinghouse enrollment ahead of time or the SMD file ahead of time. Um, so yep. anybody contemplating these other types of products, uh, this trademark clearinghouse uh, step goes in front of it. You can talk to, to us or Nick more about that process. Uh, it's pays basically a validation process just to demonstrate that you own the mark and then you get a token at the end of it proving that you are the owner of the mark and you can use that token in the future for a period of time in the future uh, to do these types of registrations. All right, thanks. Uh, on the topic of adult themed extensions and Garrett, you briefly mentioned dot sexy and there something's changing over there. So uh, could could you elaborate? Is it covered under adult block? And uh, I do understand it's not part of ICM. So yeah. what does a brand need to do to protect themselves on dot sexy? Right. So so from the outside world, we can see themes developing certainly around adult block. It's it's adult themed. So from the outside looking in, the question might be, well, why isn't sexy covered? Um, and it's a diff simply a different operator. So the these products are products of the operator um, and the ICM registry is the operator and own, owner operator of those four extensions, uh, somebody else does sexy. So it'd be up to them to create a product for that extension. Um, again, they technically fall under um, the Uni registry and uh, what will be GoDaddy um, in the future. So uh, options to address dot sexy uh, out of the gate right now, you can either do the defensive registrations, exact match, like go and register it, the your string dot sexy uh, so that you own it and control it. That's certainly an option. And then uh, the other option would be um, whether uh, there's a DPML product that will cover these extensions in the future. I don't believe there is one right now. GoDaddy does not have a product for this. Um, Nick, you might know a little bit better uh, being closer to the EPS product, whether sexy has fallen under that product line yet. Uh, not, not that I'm aware of, at least not yet. Uh, I assume I assume in the near future, but uh, there's not a lot of information out there uh, around dot sexy and whether or not it will it'll fit under um, the uni product there. Uh, I wanted to add that uh, trademark clearinghouse is, is uh, working with or is behind the T-Rex option. And uh, we just recently spoke mm -hmm. with the trademark clearinghouse and they were lining up a couple more extensions. So that product might become uh, a bit more uh, might have a bit more coverage in the near future as well uh, while we're on the topic right good point so <laughs> an answer your question uh right today if you wanted to do something now you know late 2021 uh it's to go and register the dot sexy variation of or match of, of your string so that you control it before somebody else if somebody else gets there before you you now have to jump through the hoops of demonstrating that it is actively infringing and on the mark and again what does infringement mean uh, a registered domain name that is parked right generally not infringement uh, is not being actively used for commercial purposes to create confusion and derive commercial gain if they start using it for something then then it's different but to navigate that whole labyrinth of demonstrating infringement and even once you do uh, finding out who actually owned it and wrangling control back uh, time effort money all wasted uh, it's much much uh, more cost effective and uh, risk adverse to uh, be proactive about these great thank you both that brings us to the questions section, and I did have one question uh, written down uh, from my interest as a marketer about can we punt this transition from Sunrise B to Adult Block and come back to it later? But I think uh, both of you did uh, mm -hmm. answer that already. Um, so what, what does a customer do to get started? Let's uh, end with that before we get to a few more questions that uh, both Juliana and I have and a few others as well. Mm -hmm. 
so um, Nick, if you want to be, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say it's, it's pretty straightforward. We just need you to come to us or come to me directly. Let me know um, which of the two options you're, you want to go after. Uh, the term you want to do them for and uh you know essentially we talk about how to cover your payment and that will be it uh we'll take care of the rest for you guys and we'll make sure that uh your sunrise b is converted into uh one of the two adult block option promptly uh for the term that's selected and uh you know you'll be reminded afterwards once these terms are coming up to an end to renew and so on and so forth just like we do with all our standard products mm -hmm. um I will also say that, uh, you know, if you're thinking about new marks, so non Sunrise B uh, trademarks at the moment, uh, you have time uh, after December 1st, just to recap on this. So uh, adult block is an ongoing product. So uh, new marks can be submitted as you as you get them uh, set up. So, uh, you know, this can happen at any point in time. If you run into any questions or, or like to know more, I'm available. So uh, please feel free to reach out. Great. So thank you for running through all those essential points on just trying to understand how adult block works and the transition from Sunrise B to adult block. Um, I have a few simple questions. Uh, I'm also a managing marketer here at webnames.ca and a couple of the things that I know customers um, generally sort of would want to know and maybe are not exactly clear off the bat when you're looking at blocks versus domain registrations uh, is something like, for example, what shows up on the who is information for a blocked adult block, adult block domain um, in any of these extensions? What does that look like? I'm not exactly sure about that. So maybe Nick or Garrett as product manager, you could chime in on that. And just related to that, I mean, because we know who is, is sort of that record of ownership um, and registrant information. Do you actually own adult block domains? How does that sit in sort of the domain name system in terms of ownership versus like your rights on that domain, that kind of thing? So you do not technically own the domains that you block under adult block. You actually block them from being owned by anyone, including yourself. Uh, so the who is as a result will show that the domain is reserved if you look for the individual option. So if your brand is, uh, you know, uh, web names and you're looking for web and you have the adult block in place and you're going to do a who is lookup on web names dot adult, uh, you'll just uh, be reminded that this is a reserved label and that it is not available for registration if you were to search for registration as well, but right. it won't be uh, listed that it's owned or, or you know, blocked on behalf of uh, web names at all. Uh, and, and even more so um, with the GDPR taking effect in 2018, uh, ICM registry is a registry that has redacted uh, who is contact information across the board. So uh, unless the domains, if it's an actual registration, I'm taking this on a tangent a little bit, but if it's an actual registration rather than a block, uh, unless you're an organization, uh, the details will be private. If you're an organization, right. Your name of your organization will show, but that's it. No contact name or contact information. So uh, it's already there's already some limitation on who is just for the side of the registration. And again, just to, to, to make sure I answer your question properly, adult blocks uh, are, are just blocks. So they're not owned and they just show as reserved on who is. Right. OK, and then that, that's a I, common theme for all DP, DPM right. products, right? Uh, and we've had we've had questions about that after the fact, after some goes to the effort of of uh, getting enrolled and, and getting a DPML, they go to check the who is and uh, they don't see their name associated with the, the, the domain name, the string. But uh, yeah, it is a reservation. It's like a negative registration. Right. OK, so that's great. I have a question sort of adjacent to that as we're coming up on the hour here. Um, mm -hmm. So it's reserved, um, the domain is blocked. What if I want to transition to actually using that domain live and making it operational? Uh, um, what do I do? Do I transition it into a registration and how does that work? Um, maybe you could just fill in the blanks on that one. Yep. Do you want me to take that? Um, so, yep. yeah, okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> So, so the way it works, um, we'll talk about the way it generally works and we'll talk about the way it works for adult block um, because it's different. Uh, so 
uh, for DPML products, um, when you do block a string, you also get access or rights to unblock a specific string. Like let's say you've done a plus where you've got a, a plus variation of a DPML. So there's many, many variations that are being blocked. If you singled one of those out and said, actually, we want to use that one um, for whatever purpose, um, the SMD file that you got originally through your trademark clearinghouse enrollment, uh, that key there would allow you to register uh, and supersede the, the block and register the domain name for regular use. Uh, nobody else can do that because they don't have the SMD file. Um, so you mm -hmm. do reserve the right to do that uh, throughout. Now, adult block, um, they are not offering that feature at all. A block is a block is a block, and it cannot be overridden by uh, a mark owner or anybody else. Um, we did talk about this, uh, our group here, uh, a few days ago and talked that through and generally uh, feel that that makes sense. Um, the, the plus side of it goes back to um, the way DPML overrides work in that trademarks are not globally exclusive, right? There can be valid marks issued from various geographic uh, regions for the same string. Unrelated businesses, Acme Lumber and Acme Dentists. Right, of course. They, they live in completely different geographic regions. Uh, but their uh, local, uh, you know, at federal uh, trademark level, uh, they're both valid. Uh, in a DPML world, you can uh, each individually block the same string, unbeknownst to each other even. Um, yeah. And But each party also has the right via their SMD file, because they both have one, uh, they can override. And so, Transition so in, in that world, in that world, you do still have the chance that a valid mark owner, because you're not the only only holder of, of the mark uh, globally, uh, another party could come in and unblock it uh, for their use. Now, presumably that doesn't pose a risk to you because uh, this mark and the business using it already exists. And if it didn't hit your radar up until now, um, you know, likely it, it, it will still constitute fair use of the mark. Um, in adult block, uh, not having that feature, not having the override is probably a good thing. It provides more reliable coverage, I guess. Uh, there's no exceptions. There's no little gotchas that somebody else could, because because again, the, 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 the requirements for the adult block is a little more loose, right? It's not just registered marks, but it's it's unregistered marks and it's celebrity names and things like that. Well, yeah. if there if there are two celebrity names that two celebrities globally that happen to go by the same name and can demonstrate that, uh, it would be a shame if one could override the other. Um, so no overrides for adult block whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you, you kind of answered this. This is this is just a really quick one, and some of this was contained in the answer you sort of provided. But just for clarity, for anybody who would be listening to this, even though we've sort of touched on this throughout the last couple questions, mm -hmm. um, if it comes to adult block, can it be cancelled, deleted, or transferred? I don't really see, um, you know, necessarily a purpose or a, a, a situation where you might want to go in and cancel it. We talked about what happens if you want to move towards registering that domain and different things, but maybe just uh, for clarity yeah. on those. Yeah, Nick, I'm going to let you take that one. Has anybody ever cancelled an SMD? Or, sorry. Uh uh, uh dpml uh well dpml um don't have a cancellation window uh past their first five days of registration just similar to a standard domain registration you only have a five-day yeah. window to, to sort of cancel stuff if you've done them accidentally um, okay. once you once you've passed the five days then uh, it's yours to keep until the term uh is over if you choose not to renew uh, your doll block product it will go through the same life cycle as a domain, it will go into a grace period and a redemption period, mm -hmm. give or take, the, not the same terminology, but uh, just to make, make things easy. And then it will be released. And at that point, all the uh, the domain that it was 
covering uh, will then be available for registration by anybody out there. And uh, they will be able to register them as standard domain and use them. Uh, so it's uh, that that's the, you know, the downside of letting those expire. Uh, transferring is possible. Um, you know, you may want to bring uh, an adult block from another registrar to your web names account or vice versa when you consolidate your domain portfolio. Make sure you control everything uh, under the same bucket. So uh, transferring an adult block is is possible and it's done. Uh, I will say I haven't I haven't had any experience transferring one, but uh, from from reading the instruction the instruction, it is uh, much like transferring a domain name where uh, there's right. a, a, a verification code that needs to be provided to to complete the transfer process. That makes sense. Those are all clearly edge cases, but it's worth just you know as we're sort of rounding out our yeah. discussion on this, just to to touch on them quickly. Uh, at this point, um, I don't know, I'll pass it over to you, Karthik, if there's any last topics that you want to squeeze in under the wire here. Um, no, I think that kind of brings us to the end of this discussion. And uh, as Nick and Garrett both noted, uh, if you are ready to get started with adult block, or if you're not and you have questions, feel free to get in touch with us uh, by writing to us at carpet at webnames.ca or emailing Nick. Um, and that brings us to the end of the discussion today. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. I hope it helped clarify questions some of you might have had about the dot triple X sunrise B protections and about adult block. I sure learned a lot from today's discussion. Thank you, Garrett and Nick, for sharing your thank insights you. and expertise. Uh, if Thanks. any of you have further questions, uh, please, as I mentioned, write in to us. And uh, the deadline for uh, the expiry of Sunrise B is the 1st of December. So the sooner, the better. Um, thank you again, all of you. Mm. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.